Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the romantic Victor Herbert operetta, The Only Girl, starring Gordon McRae and its lovely guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In tonight's performance of The Only Girl, the brilliant new singing star of opera, concert, and radio, Miss Dorothy Warnshold, plays the part of the beautiful Ruth Wilson. And I play Alan Kimbrough, a famous librettist who is looking for a composer to collaborate with him in the writing of his new musical comedy. And what do you think happened to him? Well, just listen. <laughs> Mr. Kimbrough, do you wish dinner at the usual time? Yes, Saunders, the usual time. Will you be dining alone again? Yes, I'll be dining alone. Any messages? Uh, will your friend Mr. Bunky stop by a little earlier with a young lady? A young lady? Yes, they're getting married on Saturday. Oh, no, not Bunky. Well, well, well. Another good man gone wrong. And Mr. Corksy called. He's getting married, too. Corksy? What woman harpooned him? Well, he didn't mention the lady's name, sir. Well, I know one thing. No woman's going to put a wedding ring through my nose. Uh, beg pardon, Mr. Kimbrough, but it isn't natural for a young man like you to live alone the way you do. Don't you ever pine for a woman's hand around the house? No. And I don't pine to have a woman's hand in my pocket, either. Bachelors don't learn a bit of sense from their married friend's experience. They just stick their heads into the noose Like a silly sentimental goose Each one thinks the other man a fool He's the one exception to the rule He says I'll be happy when I'm wed Later on he makes it when I'm dead For when you've got the ball and chain around your ankle and the stony-hearted jailer is your wife There's no virtue in repentance You have got to serve your sentence Which is labor hard for life You've a number and you bet your wife has got it Any hope of a reprieve is all in vain Matrimony is the crime for which they've got you doing time While your ankle wears the ball and chain when you wear the ball and chain around your ankle And the stony heart and jailer is your wife There's no virtue in repentance You have got to serve your sentence Which is labor hard for life You've a number and you bet your wife has got it Any hope of a reprieve is all in vain Matrimony is the crime for which they've got you doing time While your ankle wears the ball and chain No way to avoid it Your ankle wears the ball and chain You just haven't met the right young lady yet, sir. Well, I'm not interested in meeting the right young lady, Saunders. What I am interested in meeting is the right composer. Oh, I almost forgot, sir. Your publisher phoned several times this afternoon. Did he say anything about finding a composer for me? Uh, no, he said he was looking. Oh, that's too bad, son. As I have the play all written and I'm completely stymied until I find the right person to do the music. Oh, I beg pardon, sir, but the composer who wrote the music for your first show is in town. Mm, he's not speaking to me. Oh. 
Well, then, there's the one who wrote your last show. I'm not speaking to him. <laughs> I don't know what it is, Saunders, but composers are the most unreasonable lot on earth. Oh, listen. They're playing that melody again in the apartment upstairs. Isn't that a beautiful theme, Saunders? I wonder if it's the man's own composition. It certainly is pretty, sir. Pretty? Well, it's a gold mine, properly used. Do uh, you know anything about the people upstairs, Saunders? No, sir. Well, take a note to them for me, will you? I'll send my compliments and ask if the composer will give me the honor of a few minutes of his time. Come in. Mr. Kimbrough? Why, yes. I'm Ruth Wilson. You sent this note up? Oh, oh you're from upstairs. Uh, your brother isn't at home, then? No. Well, he's just gone out to give a cello lesson. Well, uh, sit down, won't you? I'm writing an operetta, and I need... A composer? Oh, yeah. How fortunate. That theme I've heard your brother playing. Did you accompany him? Yes. Uh, would you like to hear the song? Song? Other words? Yes, my father wrote the words long ago. It's called, When You're Away. Well, that's fine. Sing it for me. Thank you, I'd love to. Beautiful song. Beautiful. I could use both the words in the music. 
That is, if your brother's willing. Oh, he won't mind. I need some lighter melodies, too. A gavotte, a march, and some waltzes. Oh, how wonderful. When can we begin? We? Why, yes. Well, I don't know how you work exactly, but, well, I'm sure that if I read the book and then you gave me some of the lyrics, I might... You be... might. Oh, now, look, there's some misunderstanding. I'm talking about a collaboration with your brother. Well, why, my brother doesn't write music. He only plays. Then you wrote... Yes, it's my composition. Oh, you have no idea what this means to me. I've worked and struggled, but, well, it just seemed like nothing was ever going to happen. And then, suddenly, right out of a clear black sky, your note. But I, I can't collaborate with a woman. But, oh, you like my music. You said you liked my music. Oh, to think that a woman had to grab that theme. Well, why shouldn't I? Are women any less artistic than, or emotional than men? And what is music but emotion set down in bars and eighth notes It's and... quite impossible. Collaboration means weeks of constant work together. Disagreements, arguments. You can't have disagreements and arguments with a woman. You can't? No. They pout and soak. It's a woman's whole nature. You have a very strange conception of women. Well, I learned about women the hard way, by experience. Well, I certainly shan't force myself upon you, Mr. Kimbrell. Goodbye. Now, wait a minute. Don't you walk out of here like that. Uh... Women. They'll put you in the wrong every time. Saunders? Uh, yes, sir. You got me in a fine kettle of fish just now. Do you know what you did? There. Now, isn't that just like a woman? She's dangling that theme in front of me for spite. Well, it's not going to work. It's. Marie. All right, Saunders. Go get her. Yes, sir. You wanted to see me again? Now, look here. If I can ignore the fact that you're a woman, can you ignore the fact that I'm a man? Oh, I think I can if I really put my mind to it. Good. I'll take a chance on it. We'll be like two machines tuned up for speed. I'll turn out words and you'll turn out music. Animated by one powerful belt, ambition. You call me Kim, I'll call you Wilson. What do you say? It's a bargain. We both have hit on a wonderful scheme. You'll realize my fondest dream. I now have a me that dream. We're practical, so we both hate to see. Sentimental nature, this would be with two machines. According to our compact, just two machines and nothing more. You write the book, I write the score. Quite agreed, it's fortunate indeed that we are both so sensible. In fact, it's reprehensible when difference of sex disqualifies our ex. A pair who might collaborate upon a work which might be great. Let's trust that no such fears, no fate shall overtake us Shake, 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 shake. Just two machines. I'll write the book. I'll write the book. We'll return to the second act of The Only Girl in just a moment. But first, nobody has to tell you how the increase in the cost of living in the last 10 years has affected our daily lives. One thing it has done is to make us all quick to recognize good values in the things and services we buy. And typical of really good value is the price you pay for railroad transportation. For compared with the prices of other things, railroad rates today are not higher, but are relatively lower than they were 10 years ago. Prices generally, and this includes the prices which railroads themselves must pay, went up long before railroad rates did. And they have gone up about twice as much on the average as the prices for which railroads sell their services. So if it were not for the way railroads have held down their operating costs, today's transportation charges would have had to be much higher than they are. One thing which has helped railroads hold down costs is increased traffic volume. For the more railroads have to haul, the cheaper they can haul it. And then there have been the improvements in equipment and methods made possible by research and investment. Such things, for example, as diesel-electric locomotives, 
centralized traffic control, which enables single track to carry almost as much traffic as two, improved metallurgy and design of steel rail, and so on through a long list. Just since the end of the war, railroads have spent more than $4 billion on new equipment and better plants. In these and hundreds of other ways, railroads work to hold down their expenses. To do so requires volume traffic and continued research and investment for still greater efficiency. The benefits of which are passed on to you in the form of better service and rates lower than they would otherwise have to be. That's another reason why it's good business to do business with the railroad. And now, here is the second act of The Only Girl, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Well, now, let's see. We've got two waltzes. We've got the gavotte. What we need now is some sort of a march, a war song. Here's to the land we love, or something like that. You know what I mean, don't you? Um, something like this. That's right. They're the easiest songs in the world to write. The words aren't easy. Oh, sure they are. I'll show you. We'll write it together. I'll write the first line. You can write the second. And the first one who's stuck for a line has to... Pay for dinner. Okay, let's go. I see the soldier lad go marching to war. Although he has no idea what it is for. With flags and banners flying, the enemy defying. Well, clouds are crying his parade. He'll bravely rush into the thick of the fray. Although he'd rather rush the opposite way. With victory still his motto He fights because he's got to When bugle sounds the call to arms Here's to the land we love, boys Home of the brave and the free While our flag is proudly waving up above, boys We will never bow the neck nor bend the knee Forever to the land we love. And here's to the land we love. to the land we love, boys, home of the brave and free. While our flag is proudly waving up above, boys, we will never bow the neck or bend the knee. The girls that we left behind, boys, faithful and true, they stand. So then here's Help forever to the land we love And here's to the love we love <laughs> There, you see how easy it was? And now what we need is a big second act curtain Yes, well, that should be easy Are you tired? Oh, no, no, nothing like that Machines don't get tired Hmm, that sounded a little sarcastic to me Well, maybe it was Hmm, Wilson, what's the matter with you? Look, Kim, I've tried to be a machine, but... Well, we both agreed the moment either of us weakened, we'd quit. It's no go, Kim. I just can't take it anymore. Well, take what? Well, that cold, indifferent, cynical manner of yours. Oh, now, Wilson, you can't leave me now. Our work is nearly finished. We've been a big success together. This show's going to be a hit. Our work, success. That's all you ever think about. Well, what else is there? What else? Why, well, there's love and happiness. And there's self-sacrificing and suffering for those we care for. Those are the big things in life. I don't want to turn out to be an it like you are. An it? Say, who do you think you are standing there and talking to me like that? Good night, Kim. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've got just the idea for the finale. This quarrel we've just had. Instead of looking for a way to part the lovers, we'll let them part themselves. We'll write a quarrel scene. That's it. They're alone in the wilderness. They're conscious only of the fact that they have reached a crisis in their lives. He tells her she must, for her own sake, as well as for his, carry out their original agreement. And she... Well, don't you see it, Wilson? She... Wilson. How do you know? She's gone. That's right. She should go. 
That's what I'll have her do. And he'll stand there, benumbed by silence and wonder. He'll wonder if this is the end, if she's ever coming back to him again. And then in the midst of that silence, he faintly hears her singing the love theme from afar. He listens rapturously. And slowly the curtain falls. Are you having dinner alone again tonight, sir? You mean she still hasn't returned, Saunders? She isn't upstairs, sir, if that's what you mean. But she left this apartment last night at six o'clock. Where could she be? What does her brother say? Uh, he isn't there either. All right. If she wants to stay away, I can work without her. That'll be all, Saunders. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, now, let's see. Where was I? Oh, yes. I was working on the lyric of personality. Now, let's see. The girl who's trying out for the lead in the show comes into the manager's office, and she sings. There's everything in personal appearance With perseverance and proper press work You may manage to find many rich and generous adherents Who will assist you in many little ways Real acting is all right, but I'm not quiet Why should I try it? When I'm a riot playing just myself Your art will never get you any money It is funny, but it's your personality that pays There's everything in personal appearance With perseverance and proper press work you may Should I try it when I'm a riot playing just myself? Your art will never get you any money. It is funny, but it's your personality. Well, I, I think the lyrics all right. Now I'll. Wilson. Saunders. Saunders, listen, she's back. Yes, sir, I hear. Well, go up and get her. Yes, sir. No, 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 Saunders, wait a minute. Perhaps it would be better if... Yes. I'll go up, Saunders. Ruth. The name was Wilson last night, wasn't it, Kim? Where have you been all night? My brother and I stayed with my aunt. She wasn't feeling well, and well, besides, it's none of your business anyhow. I didn't sleep all night. That's very unfortunate. Confound it! You might help me out a little bit. Help you out? In what way? I'm trying to say I'm in love with you. You're what? I'm trying to say I'm in love with you. What's this? Your third act curtain? It is, so far as our love story is concerned. Oh, darling, I'm in love with you. Will you please marry me? You're really in love with me? I'll show you if you'll give me half a chance. In love with me? Well, when on earth did that happen? I couldn't tell you, honey. It just happened. Somewhere between the first and the third act curtain. You know something, Kim? That's exactly when I fell in love with you. Promise me, love, that we
again. Uh, beg pardon, sir. Yes, what is it, Saunders? Are you having dinner alone again tonight? No, Saunders. There'll be two for dinner from now on. Well, congratulations to both of you. Uh, begging your pardon, Mr. Kimbrough, I told you that's what would happen when you met the right girl. Well, I've not only met the right girl, Saunders, I've met the only girl. <laughs> Warren Scholl will be back in just a moment. Our thanks also to Eric Snowden for his performance of Saunders in tonight's production. The Only Girl with book and lyrics by Henry Blossom and music by Victor Herbert was adapted for radio by Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Remember that whenever you ship by rail, your money is working in four different ways. It pays for safe, dependable transportation. It helps ensure better and more economical service in the years ahead. It promotes business for industry and jobs for people in all parts of the country. And it means taxes that help pay for the education of your children and the general public welfare. Yes, for the country and for you, it's good business to do business with the railroads. And now here again is lovely Dorothy Warren Show. Our thanks to you, Dorothy, for being with us tonight aboard the show train. Well, it was a great thrill, Gordon, and I hope I'll be invited back for a return visit very soon. Well, I'll tell you what. You let us know when you finish doing Tales of Hoffman on television back east, and we'll see what we can be arranged. I will, thanks. <laughs> and meanwhile, I'll be listening each Monday night. Well, we're doing Jerome Kern's wonderful score for Sonny next week, Dorothy, and our guest is a gal with whom I've made many, many records, the charming and very popular Miss Jo Stafford. Sounds wonderful. I'll be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Dorothy. All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so, until next week, goodbye. Girl has been presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae will soon be seen in the Warner Brothers Technicolor musical, The Daughter of Rosie O'Grady. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. And now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Stay tuned for Eleanor Stieber and Voice of Firestone.